as long as the hand mentor and the modus hand and your orientation is the same, you can adopt any posture with it. That's totally fine. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Nick Housey with Modus Nova. I'm a licensed neurophysical therapist and neuroscientist helping brain injury survivors understand how to make functional gains after their injury. I hope this video helps you in your recovery. I, I had a stroke back in um, 2019 and they don't really even know why I had it. They finally told me I had a migraine stroke, whatever that is. But it was on the right side of my brain and affected the left side of my body. And one of the okay. weird things, I'm up to two hours a day now, but the thing that's bugging me is I'm doing more. And, and for some reason, the past week, my hand has gotten tighter. But that's not one mm -hmm. of the main things. You know, when I get up sometimes in the morning and sometimes in the afternoon, I have what I call these involuntary stretches. My body just stretches. But my left arm and hand and left leg, it's like the whole left side of my body is involved in that stretch. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that my, my, this is my right hand, obviously, but my left hand will go just like that. It'll go straight out, you know? And sometimes my husband is helping me get my, uh, my hand mentor on. My, it's hard to get my fingers uncurled, but if I pull on my thumb, my fingers will uncurl a little bit. Yep. 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 That's, that's so weird. Yeah. I've been doing this, I've been doing this since June and I still can't move my hand up by myself. It's not moving up at all, but I can move it down. And sometimes when I'm trying to move it up, my hand goes down. I'm trying to go the other way, and my hand goes the opposite way. Yep. And what was fascinating to me, I was watching you with Dylan. You can actually put your hand in different positions, and it will affect. What about if I put my hand in the hand mentor upside down? So I would not recommend, for what you're talking about, I would not recommend putting your hand, it's supposed to go like this normally, right? Where your, your palm right. is down here. I would right. not recommend putting your hand in like this, okay? That would not be necessarily what we'd want, okay? So what I would very much encourage you to do is to find a position if the hand, as long as the hand mentor and the modus hand and your orientation is the same. You can adopt any posture with it. That's totally fine. But I can put okay. it in my lap and I can turn it to the side too. Yeah, totally. Well, that'll that'll work like a what a different. So really, what it is is, is so there are cases, and let me let me just say, an ideal world. What we want to do is you want to build back your capacity to independently move your wrist, your fingers, your elbow from one another. Okay. That's ultimately what we want to do. It's called uncoupling those uh, motor segments, okay? Problem is, after a stroke, and this is actually true during the development process. So what happens when we first are born and we are sort of uh, very nascent human beings, there are these things called reflex patterns that are uh, bedded in our nervous systems, right? A really good example of this is if you are going to accidentally touch a hot stove, what do you do? You pull your hand back. You pull your hand back. Okay. Well, what does that posture look like? This posture very much looks like what you adopt following a stroke, right? You have this sort of internally rotated flex posture. And so what's happening is these circuits that are embedded, these reflex circuits that are, are embedded in our nervous systems begin to emerge. And so what happens during normal development is you actually regain the capacity to say, no, I don't want to move in a reflex pattern. I want to be able to move my elbow independent from my wrist and my shoulder, for instance. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe to help other brain injury survivors learn how Modus Nova is changing neuro rehab. But what happens after a stroke is you get these patterns to, to come back because your, your brain is not providing the same sort of inhibitory control to release those reflexes. And so in an ideal world, we want to work on those sort of discriminated movement patterns where you can move these things independently. But what I'm saying is when we start to, on that process of regaining that control, we need to recognize that it's going to be, there's a big lift if we kind of jump straight to that end goal. That's not going to be successful. So what we need to do is we need to kind of recognize where we are in that process of recovery and make some modifications to that. It's just acknowledging where you are and trying to best fit an intervention around you wherever you are. And so I think the recommendation was 
when you find yourself in a posture where it's more comfortable to be kind of rotated in more of a neutral posture instead of being palm down, because it can be really hard to go palm down if you're not able to. Having a palm up posture where your kind of thumb is up, that's going to be much easier for you to accommodate. And that means that your modus hand is going to also be like this, and you're going to end up using it on its side. That's okay. We're still working on the same motor patterns, but what we've done is we've kind of reconfigured your arm a little bit to be a bit easier to work with. And so it's just, it's a matter of figuring out where you are. And this is true for every stroke survivor, every survivor of neurologic injury. We need to figure out where you are right now and figure out how we can best fit a tool to meet you, to help you perceive. And so that's part of that recommendation. I will say, I will say that after a while when I started using this, I don't know if you can see me, but I was able, and even more when I'm laying down, I'm able to bend my elbow and pull it up. Yep. And I wasn't able to do that before. This is part of it, not all of it. Part of it is coming from my elbow. Part yep. of it, yep. of course, is coming from my shoulder. But I'm able to move my elbow much more. Like if I'm laying flat in the bed, I can just bend my elbow. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is part of that process that I was actually going to get to in a second. That was you were acknowledging, you were telling me, actually, I, I really love to listen uh, and work with you guys because I like to extract little bits of, of, of knowledge that you are learning about your own stroke and kind of remind you of this. And that is when what you're doing right now is you're actually seeing the emergence of the neural connections. And that is the process by which you're getting this kind of increased tone. Okay. Everyone thinks that tone is bad. Um, and technically tone is not bad, right? All of us have tone in our arms and our legs. Tone is what keeps our heads standing up, right? And our shoulders from falling out of our sockets. The problem is, is when it becomes abnormal. And so what we have to do following a stroke is we have to regain that tone in an appropriate way. And again, it's, it's almost like where we build back this capacity and we have to refine it. It's almost, I think I gave an analogy a couple of weeks ago where it's like this sort of. Uh, 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 marble slab. And we want to be able to kind of have this marble slab. We have to have it to, to actually have some motor performance, but then we have to like slowly chip away at it to refine the patterns in which you can activate your muscles. And so what you may be experiencing is if you don't have a whole lot of activation beforehand, what you're getting now is kind of, I don't want to say crude in a sense that I'm calling you crude, but the motor patterns are a bit crude and they're kind of unrefined. And that's okay that we're having that emergence of those of that activation, and you might experience this tightness following it, and that's okay. But we want to ultimately work on improving the control of that tone. And that tone, I guess, technically, control of tone is control, right? Me being able to pick up this cup of coffee requires me to generate tone first in my shoulder. I can lift my, my, my uh, deltoid up, it has to contract. Then I have to extend my, my, my arm, my elbow here, my triceps kick on, right? All those things are changes in tone. And you just have to build back that capacity to finally control um, those motor patterns. And so what you're, what you're seeing is kind of that process. But you know, from your perspective, it, it can seem like it's just bad in its tone. But I want to encourage you that it's not necessarily bad. Thanks for watching this video. If you have questions or would like to speak with me about how you can make functional gains from home, call or text me at 404-939-3476 or visit modusnova.com slash contact.